Hi there, today's quick tip video is on the mix console. This mix console does so much more than just mix music, even though I guess the main purpose of a mix console is to mix music. As you look around, you'll see that there's a lot of different sections in this mix console, and that's because I wanted to do things in reverse. I've added as many things into the mix console so that we start with everything and one by one we're going to strip it back and look at what everything does. Let's start on the left hand side. Now we've got the channel selector column on the left hand side. We can turn this on and off by going to the inspector and just simply unticking the channel selector box. The channel selector lists all the tracks that we have in the project and all of those tracks on the left hand side will also be represented by a fader out in the main console section. There are two sections to the channel selector, visibility and zones. In visibility, we can click on different tracks to highlight them. We can hide and show tracks by clicking on the circle to the left of the track name. The visibility component of the channel selector is really important if you're working with a large track count. The zone feature allows you to cement different channels to the right or the left hand side of the mixer. You can see I'm scrolling through and my tracks are moving, but my group tracks, which were cemented to the right, stay put. I'm now moving them over to the left hand side. The zone feature ensures that important tracks like VCA, groups, effects and master faders are always visible no matter where we are in the mix. If you're working with a large track count, you can also use the search function to find a track very quickly. Just type in the name and immediately it's selected on the mixer. The mix console is completely configurable and you can use the window layout tool up in the top left hand side to turn windows on and off. One of the amazing things about this mix console is that you control the real estate. You can pick up on the lines or the boundaries that separate different segments or windows and drag them up and down and left and right. All of these different segments now scale to size and it's really good because you can focus on a particular area of your mix. You can zoom in and out horizontally on the tracks by using the G and the H button on your computer keypad. Right above the faders in the pan section is the notes section. You can double click on each track to make mix notes. You can make engineering notes like the microphone that you used on a specific track. Above the notes we've got little pictures. They're basically icons that give us a visual representation of what's inside the track. Moving up we've got the rack section. It contains a number of different tabs and we click on a tab to get access to the information inside. Like EQ, where we've got a real-time frequency analyzer and we can start editing EQ points at the touch of a button. You can also choose to have the EQ visible at all times in the window layout and it will appear above the rack section. Now we're getting to the disco segment of the mix console, the meter bridge. Even this is customizable. On the left, you can see we've got a waveform representation of what's going on in the track, showing us the transients. We can right mouse click to toggle in between the waveform and the peak program meter, which gives us an audio level for the track. You can also access the window layout tool by moving your mouse up to the top of the mix console window, and you can tick and untick boxes again to get a different view. In a few minutes, we've changed the mix configuration from being quite an advanced layout to very simple layout. Let's now go and save this by clicking on Configuration, Add Configuration, Naming it, and clicking OK.